Hi, my name is Carrie Pillay, and today I'm going to talk to you about your nervous system. Um, this is one of the most exciting things that I talk about with people when, when I talk about drugs and substance use because what we're going to talk about initially is how our nervous system functions normally, how we're supposed to look, what we're supposed to do, and how, how our body does this all by itself. And then the second piece is what happens when we introduce things that aren't native or normal to be in our system into our system. So let's start first uh, just about our, normal, our nervous system. I'm going to divide things into three parts, make it easy for you. You're not going to be a brain surgeon or a um, rocket scientist when you're done, but you will have a better idea about what normal is and how your body just does this wonderful thing that it does called living. Um, three parts of the nervous system. Brain, we all have one of those, and if you're watching this, I know that they're working. We all have a spinal cord, those run down your back. You know, they have that backbone there, that spinal cord runs down between those bones. And then you have nerves that make up everything outside of the brain and the spinal cord. When we look at the nervous system, we actually are going to divide it into two parts. Makes it a little easier to understand what does what. The biggest part and the one that does probably the most significant work is your central nervous system. Your central nervous system is made up of your brain and your spinal cord and that's it. What makes that so special is that your central nervous system, that brain and spinal cord, are protected by what I would call a security fence. And so it has monitors and it has entry points. You have to have the code or the key to get into the central nervous system. And you may think, well, what's so big about that? Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, nothing. Nothing is so big about that. You know, when you take a Tylenol for a headache, you're putting something that isn't native to your body into your body for some effect, to get rid of your headache perhaps, and your headache goes away. You take um, some Mylanta because you have a little bit of heartburn after you had that spicy lunch, uh, and it makes that heartburn go away. Both of those medications do what you put them in your system to do. What's, what's important is they do that and they don't cause us to have any kind of a high, a buzzed feeling. That's because neither of those medications have keys. They don't get into the central nervous system and affect, affect change there. When we talk about things like alcohol though, where if you, drink, if you drink enough, you get a buzz. That's because alcohol has a key. It can get into your central nervous system. Marijuana has a key. Gets into your central nervous system. Painkillers. Cocaine, all of the drugs that people use or experiment with for the high feeling that they give you have keys and can get into the central nervous system and have an, an effect what goes on there. That's what's so significant. What does your central nervous system do? Well, its job is to regulate the rest of the body. The brain in itself doesn't have a lot of nerve endings in it, so it doesn't experience a lot of pain, but it does regulate your digestion. It regulates your hormones. It regulates your mood. Okay? It tells muscles what they should and shouldn't be doing. Okay? Central nervous system gets all of its input from the nerves. From the nerves. And that is the second part of the nervous system. That's called peripheral. Peripheral means outside. And so your peripheral nervous system is everything outside your brain and your spinal cord. And the job of that peripheral nervous system is to send information to the brain and respond to what the brain tells it to do. That seems pretty simple. It gets its input, the stuff that it sends to the brain, by uh, regulator, I guess I would call them, regulator kinds of things. So, for instance, we, you get out your car, you're not really paying attention, your hand is between the door jam and the door as the door closes, and what happens to you? Your eyes get big, you, your, as your hand is getting squeezed and now is stuck in the door, and you're yelling and attempting frantically to open the door, because why? Because your hand hurts, it's stuck in the door. That's the pain sensors. Okay? We also have pressure sensors. An example of that would be, you know, you're sitting there watching this, and you're, you're getting a little uncomfortable and so you're wiggling around in your chair. That's because there's some pressure on some part that your body doesn't like. 
or when you're wearing a pair of shoes that pinch your toes and you're wiggling your foot because the pressure, pressure sensors sent the signal to the brain, hey, my toe's cramped here, and your brain said, well, wiggle your foot or you know, take your foot out of your shoe, do whatever to take the pressure off. That's what it does. We also have temperature sensors. This is a fun one, because think about this. You don't actually have to touch the hot burner on the stove to know that the stove's hot, do you? No. If you're moving slow enough as your hand approaches the hot burner, you get a sense of warmth before you actually go on to touch it. That's an example of one of your temperature sensors. And we have, we have lots of these kinds of sensors, but those are the three kind of big ones that most of us identify with. And those sensors send signals to, this, to the brain through the spinal cord, and the brain decides what it's going to do, okay? So you have the two parts of the, of the nervous system, the central brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral, which are the nerves outside the, the brain and the spinal cord. We have to go back and look at the brain a little more in depth.